Hi you guys. So today, we'll be working on a commission. My commissioner, she wanted a casual piece with syndrome. So I was thinking, okay, casual, romantic, maybe something a little bit warm. So I chose this palette because I was really feeling like using a cream color. Cream is more on the yellowy side, but this palette had orange. That was close enough for me. I just really wanted like those pale, light, airy tones, you know? So I start out by inking her, and this piece is a flat color headshot with an extra character. So I'm trying to emphasize as much as I can using line art. Whenever I do flat colors, I try to keep things flat. I also try to emphasize what I can since I don't want to shade. I try not to shade. Sometimes I get carried away. <laughs> but for the most part, um, I try to emphasize what I can using line art. I try to emphasize how the face is shaped, where the shadows would typically be by thickening the areas where they would typically be darker, such as like under the chin and making the bridge of the nose, making that line art thinner because if it's being hit by light, Depending on the angle of the light, it'll likely be thinner. I was thinking that maybe if they're like in like a warmly lit room, this piece won't have a background, but I like to imagine where would these two people be whenever I illustrate a commission. I'm doing typical line art things, and I really struggled with Syndrome's eye for this. Like, you can see I'm thinking here, I pause for a second, because I'm like, this eye doesn't look right. And I was drawn him from a profile before, and it was at this moment I realized that something I had said in the past that I forgot was that I didn't want to draw Syndrome from a profile anymore. Like, his face doesn't really make sense to me, but I'm figuring it out. So, I guess that rule was meant to be broken, because I'm definitely figuring out how to draw him from a profile side. He just... It, it just doesn't... <laughs> he's not anatomically correct, okay? We all know it. Let's, let's just move past it. <laughs> I keep working and lately I've been doing my sclera differently. Sclera is the reflection of light in the eye and I really liked how that came out. I was really excited for that part because I feel like sometimes the sclera can make or break the vibe and the feeling of an illustration. When it came to clothing, I typically ask for clothing like references, but my commissioner didn't really have any idea of what they wanted in particular. They just said, keep it casual. So <laughs> I was really excited. As I said before, I'm trying to like draw more fashionable outfits just because it's fun to draw clothing. So at this point I was like, okay, I can pick the clothing. So I chose to like give them these sweaters. Something about me, if I can put a sweater on it, I'm going to put a sweater on it. I just love how they look. I give Sandra like a casual, like maybe an athletic set type of sweater. And I give the um, commissioner's OC, her name is Astara. I give her like a thicker, fuzzier sweater. I was really excited to do the fuzzies on the sweater. I think because Valentine's Day is coming up and Valentine's Day is kind of a winter holiday, that's also why I was excited. I love winter. Not a big Valentine's Day fan. Like, I like the vibes, you know? I like the pink, the light, the romantic vibe. Now, something that they asked for that I hadn't drawn yet, I was thinking about though, their character has locks. I've drawn locks a couple of times. My partner has locks. I draw him every now and then. So I have some experience with that, but I was a little bit nervous um, because I've never like drawn locks for any other characters aside from that. And when, it's, when I'm doing it for myself, the quality doesn't quite matter. So I was a little nervous. Um, I've always struggled with drawing like certain Afro style hairstyles, just fit them into my style. I kind of don't like doing hair in general. <laughs> Certain shapes, you know, shapes can make or break the hairstyle, but I pulled up a reference and I really studied it. And as you can see from my sketch, I had like a lot of ideas down. 
like I was thinking about adding the little curly to the end of the locks because a lot of media will portray locks as these like solid thick things but locks are hair there's like a few loose strands here and there so I was a little bit nervous but also a little bit excited to like make them look like locks you know look more than just like these thick chunky things that a lot of people just default to not to insult that style just it'd be nice to have some more variety you know at this point I play around with adding a lighter color to the locks I'm using Begalia's brush set and I saw a tutorial where it mentioned that she uses like a lighter color for the backdrop of the locks and I feel like that works if you have the style for that. Some of my work does, but I don't want my commissioner to be confused when they see that and think, why did you make the hair pink, you know? So I did that and I just saved it for later and I focused on the flat colors of the subjects. At this point I had to laugh um, because <laughs> I saved the hair for last. So it was giving off like older couple. I use a clipping mask to color subjects, so the base color of the clipping mask is gray, all the color on top is my flat colors, and then once I get all the top colors, then I make the gray layer black. And at that point, I was like taking a screenshot to send my commissioners like, haha, old, <laughs> you know? But I mean, they look good old. A star looks really good old. Syndrome, um, he aged okay for what he is. If you know, you know. But yeah, at this point, I made the locks black and white and I was just like thickening them up here and there because the faded edges kind of gave off like thinning, not quite full lock. And I had a lot of fun doing the texture. I pulled up the reference to look at because I was like, how long are these locks supposed to be again? Was there a taper fade? Because I have sh shaved sides to my hair. I almost got this style locked hair up top. And I know that fading it is common. And I've never done like a fade before either. So I was like using like short hair brushes and curly brushes to make it look like faded hair. I was also experimenting a bit with the hairlines. When I do a fully rendered illustration, sometimes I'll like blend them and things like that. But there's this one artist I was studying their works of and they like to use like painterly brushes to just get down the hairline, like suggest where it's like naturally blended. And I thought that was pretty cool. At this point, I'm coloring in the line art. I'm not a big fan of coloring line art. Like I'm typically more of a fan of black line art Partially because it's quicker, but when it comes to a flat illustration, I feel like colored line art does it justice. I add little highlights here and there, but no actual shading, you know, just little things. Little areas to like make it pop, like the nose shine. I always shade the eyes and I love doing lips now, so I had to do the lips. Just a little bit. If you can't tell, I had a lot of fun doing this. They commissioned me like the previous night and I was like, okay, I hope I can do this. And sometimes when I do a commission, I like get to art, like an art block and I'm like, oh no, I, what if it's not as good as I think it should be, stuff like that. But this, I finished this in like about an hour and a half, which I was surprised by. I was checking through it like, did I forget something? Because sometimes when you finish things too quickly, you're like, okay, I must have rushed this. Like, there's no way I finished it that quickly. But it was a flat, it was a headshot, so makes a bit of sense. Um, but I just had so much fun drawing it. I also loved her profile. Profiles, a lot of people struggle. Sometimes I struggle. But when they come out good, it's really rewarding to do. I'm just adding a few touch-ups here. And at this point, I've been doing this thing lately where I add a paper texture on top. I didn't like this paper texture, so like I chose a different one. Sometimes I either add a paper texture or I texture the line art. 
I'm depending on if the line is colored or not. I switch between the times. Then I add his freckles and I go over everything. I like freckle him here and there because I almost forgot. And there we have it, the complete illustration. I've already sent this to the commissioner and they're pretty happy about it. Well, go ahead and hit that follow button down below to be one of my little rats. Thanks for watching along. Bye.